So these, welcome to the days of manna. Okay, y'all having uh, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, right? Manna's unleavened, amen. All right, let's start with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for the time of unleavened bread that reminds us of the time of manna, that reminds us of the time of the exodus coming out in a hurry and just being in a hurry to follow you. And that's where we are today, Father. We just want to, we want to follow you. And even if we don't have time to cook. And we just thank you for that, Father. In Yeshua's name. Amen. Exodus 13, as Moshe says to the people, Remember this day which you came out of Egypt, out of the house of bondage and slavery. For by a strong hand, Yahweh brought you out from that place, and no leavened bread shall be eaten. So it's really cool to think about using this time of unleavened bread, and leaven representing sin, right? And Egypt representing the world, and he brings us out of the world, out of sin. And so one of the things we can do at this time is remember what he brought us away from. And now if we were like stuck back in that, we'd want to run away from it. We wouldn't take time to say, well, I'm here, so I'm going to bake, and I'm going to let my bread... No, just get out of it. That's the trick. Once you're out, stay out. Don't get back in Egypt, right? Yeah. Amen. Okay. And so during that time, seven days for a full period, then we eat it, and it's a feast to Yahweh. And we eat the unleavened throughout the seven days, and no leaven shall be found with you. No yeast be seen with you within all your borders. And so that's, again, that's a picture of sin and learning how to get it out of our lives and keep it out. And it's a sign that Yahweh's law may be in our mouth because of what he did. Because he brought us out. Anybody here just come out of the world on your own power and just get away from sin? No. That's part of grace. It's his power that empowers you to do what you can't do on your own. And so this is a picture of that. It's about what he did. And therefore, we shall keep this ordinance in its season from year to year. And so this is, it's really a powerful time for believers to recognize what Yeshua has done in our life. That he's empowered us to come out of sin, to come out of the world, and, and to become overcomers. Amen? Yes. Hallelujah. Okay. In the wilderness, they got a... A manna test and a Sabbath rest. Okay? All at the same time. It's in Exodus chapter 16. It says, on the, on the sixth day they gathered twice as much bread. Two omers for each one. So it's the day of preparation. And all the rulers came and told Moshe what they did. It goes on to say, He said to them, This is what Yahweh has spoken. spoken. Tomorrow is a solemn rest. A holy Sabbath to Yahweh. Bake what you will bake. Like King James there said, seize what you will seize. Like, I'm not sure what that means. Some seize stuff. But, but it means boil. Boil that which you will boil, and all that remains be kept until the morning. So you cook on Friday. This is where we get that command. There's a series of Sabbath commands introduced during the time of unleavened bread. This is before the Ten Commandments. Okay? And the Ten Commandments, he just says, remember to keep it holy, but he doesn't tell you how. In fact, but he's already given us a couple of things and he gives us a couple more after that. You, you're only going to find about seven or eight. And we did the, the totality of them last year, I think. But these are important because it's in, in, in the um, portion today that we're looking at. And so he tells us to do our cooking, do all your preparation ahead of time so you can rest. Okay? You want to be... Why, why cooking? Why, why that of all things? You know? Because it's a picture of creating. He stopped creating on the Sabbath day and he wants us to stop creating. I mean, you see people come in with a beautiful dish. Oh, that's such a wonderful creation. It's a picture of creation, you know. And so cooking is a picture of creation where we take something and m move it from one form to the other. God took something, his will and his power, and moved nothing to his purpose in creation. And so this creation, so it's a picture of that, that's why. Okay, and then he asked, <laughs> and of course they did it right away, they're like, okay, yeah, we're going to do exactly what you said, and then we don't, right? It's like, it's a picture of, we, we, he's like, how long are you going to refuse to keep my commandments, my instructions? Yahweh has given you the Sabbath, therefore he gives you on the preparation day, the sixth day, enough bread for two days. So everyone stay in his place and don't go out on the Sabbath day. So here's another one of those commands. 
So the people rested on the seventh day. So they get it here during unleavened bread before it's actually, before we see it in Exodus 20 and, and onward. So this is the first time we see them. It's like, okay, you got enough. You got enough food. You got everything in place. You cook. Rest. Just stop. Rest. Take a day off. You know, there's been all sorts of studies done on what's the most efficient way for people to work. Y'all have probably heard of some of those, but, you know, they've tried five-day weeks, two-day on, two-day off. They've tried everything in the book. And the single most efficient way for human beings to work is to work six days and take one day off. Work six days and take one day off. Work six days and take one. I wonder why. Or maybe I don't wonder why. Like they should have started with that one. That should be the most obvious one that works. Because God said it works. That is what works. And so it's a really, uh, it works for our timing. It works for our, for our clock. When we, you, you talk to anybody that's doing shift work. You know, my goodness. And it's like, I mean, I've done bizarre work for years and I haven't even gotten over it yet. It's like, people wonder. It was like, if you know me and I'm going to text you, you better mute your phone at night. Okay. I'm texting people at between 2 and 4 a.m. last night. Theological questions. Yes. Okay. And I mean like into it, you know, wide awake. But that's from driving at night. You know, it's like drive at night for 18 years and then try to go to sleep at night. So we can set our clock, but the most efficient clock, and that was really rough. That's really rough on the body. I mean it was rough on me. I don't doubt for a minute that some of the health issues that I that I'm overcoming are a result of that. Because you don't rest. And we, our body really needs rest. It desperately needs rest. One of the best things you can do to heal is rest. Okay? That's when our body heals. And so, work six days, take the day off. Rest. So that's what he says. Command us to rest. And if he gives us a command and we keep it, what happens? We get blessed. Amen? We know that's what's going to happen. So the house of Israel called the name of the stuff that fell from heaven manna. Said it looked like coriander seed. It's white and it tastes like wafers with honey. Which is really cool because Crystal made me some wafers with honey last week. And they, I, they were awesome. <laughs> they really were. They were really good. And um, Moshe said, this is the thing which Yahweh has commanded. Let an omer full be kept throughout your generations that they may see the bread with which I fed you in the wilderness when I brought you out of the land of Egypt. And that's, that's interesting because we know it went bad if you tried to keep it, right? But he commanded them to keep a jar of it. And um, they put it, ultimately, they put it in the Ark of the Covenant. So it still exists. It'll be interesting to see that. People have had theories about what it was. I mean, there's various things about, ideas about what it was. But this is unique. I don't think, I don't think this has ever existed. There's things like it, kind of maybe a picture of it. But this is unique. This was created for that time. And so really, unleavened bread... Think about it, unleavened bread and then counting the omer. This is where we see the idea of the omer. Counting the, the, the measure is a picture of our redemption from Egypt and, and from the world of sin. And so we keep it. We keep it with pleasure. I mean, in fact, when unleavened bread's over, I usually continue to eat unleavened bread for sometimes another week. Just because. It's because, because, because. You know, it's good. You know, and it's good stuff. Amen? Amen. Amen.